Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again to break down how Clash Royale massively messed up. Their balance changes nerfed Electro Giant, but they didn't nerf the problem. Mirror is still standing strong, giving you overleveled cards at every opportunity. Whenever your opponent uses the original counters on the Electro Giant, and you have a bigger, beefier level 16 one on the back, they're probably not gonna have anything to stop the attack. Usually, in Clash Royale, you have to cycle four cards to get back to the same card. But since you used Mirror, it counts as one of those cards. So with this deck, you can cycle Electro Giant, Mirror, cycle three more cards like Skeletons, Bats, and Bomber, and only spend five Elixir to get back to another Electro Giant. As you can see, this needs an immediate nerf. You can endlessly cycle Electro Giants, creating a nightmare that your opponent can't escape. Usually, in single elixir, I just focus on stacking up elixir collectors to power the deck. And whenever opponents make one mistake, it will be their last. So let's go jump straight some games and assert dominance. And a whole lot of love to everyone that's using Creator Code Sir Tag to support the channel. Let's go! So easy tornado value at the start. Unfortunately, one of them's off to the side in the safe spot that I'm not able to pull. But we're still pulling them directly to the King Tower. And we're gonna have an easier defense for each successive push that this man whips out. Okay, so if you're going to Princess, that's going to be a negative one trade for you. And then if you Rocket, it's also a negative one trade for you. So we're building up the Elixir advantages here. Maybe I can mini pack with a Bomber, so then if you go for Guards or something, they're just going to die. You're not going to have Princess in Cycle, so I can also go in for Bats if I really wanted to. The Valkyrie isn't going to give you an Account Approach. It's going to give you a 4 for 4 trade with the mini pack, but you are able to finish off the Bomber too. So not the best start in the world for me, but I think we can find our way through if we cycle enough E-Giants and just get mirrored up in here. Because regular E-Giant got a lot worse after the nerf. But the mirrored up one still fulfills the same definition of damage. It's one of those things that if your opponent doesn't have a building in cycle and they use it on the first one and they're down elixir, the second one will just take towers. It's a really dirty strategy and this is how you should play E-Giant. So the first one probably won't be able to break through, but the second one will hopefully do all the damage. So I'm going to go in for an Electro Giant here. I'm going to be aiming to go in for a Bats off to the side so then they can go right towards the tower. If he doesn't have Princess, because he dropped to the left-hand side and he doesn't have Electro Spirit, the Bats might just straight up take the entire thing. So adjusting to your opponent's card cycle, recognizing when they make a mess up, and taking advantage of that works out really well. So I'm going to be planning on going in for Skeletons here, because he had already dropped Log. Oh, really smart play of him going in for the, the guards and making the predictions on the Skeletons or the Bomber. But at the same time, the Bomber will be able to kill that unless he logs, and then if he logs, then he's not going to have anything for the Skeletons. Because if he goes in for Electro Spirit, then he's not going to have anything for the Bats. And remember, when he didn't have anything for Bats, he lost his entire tower. It worked out really well that we now have an Elixir Collector safely on the map, with Mirror in our hand, and the potential of dropping double Electro Giants. So even if you get that tower damage, it doesn't matter to me. You're trying to get me to use my Mirror so that I won't have two Electro Giants. But that doesn't work, bro. I, I know exactly how I want to play this deck, and we are not deviating from it. Okay, I can kill the Princess with the Bomber, and then I can Mini P.E.K.K.A immediately on top of the Valkyrie, because he wants the Rocket. I'm not dropping them all on the same side and giving them too much value. It's incredibly important to do that. The first E-Giant is about to die, but, you know, we're back to his brother already. <laughs> and this is where the deck becomes really stupid, where you just keep spamming E-Giants on every single side, and even when your opponent counters one, there's way more fun. I'm able to cycle another Electro Giant here. He's going to lose all of his stuff on the right-hand side, and it's going to give him a lot of pain and suffering. We're able to tornado the princess in with the Valkyrie as well, so then it's going to get retargeted onto the Electro Giant and die. So, ooh, wait, the Bomber finished it off first. That's pretty cool. I'll take that trade. <laughs> as you guys can see, it's a pretty toxic strategy, but it's a very fun one at the same time. As long as you're not playing against it, you'll love it. GG, well played and peace out. His log only does 77 damage, so he would need a rocket to finish off the left-hand tower. And rocket takes four seconds, and you're out of time. Let's keep cruising today. We've been getting so many wins in Clash Royale that I just... I don't know. I've been enjoying experimenting with a lot of different decks. And especially after cards get nerfed, people feel like they've fallen out of the meta. And they're like, yeah, you know, Electro Giant, no one runs that anymore. So you see Skeletons and you see Elixir Collector and you're like, ah, probably three Musketeers, right? Wrong. So I want to see him bridge spam into me and drop like a minion horde right into an Electro Giant. Sometimes that happens when you just automatically win. Okay, this is pretty cool. So he's going to have Fireball and he's going to have Barbrill. Makes me feel like it's probably going to be a graveyard deck if I had to guess. We can go and yoink that Electro Wizard into us right now with a Tornado before he's ready to drop something. And now with him losing the Electro Wizard, he's going to have a much harder time defending. Oh, let's go! So if you guys hate Mega Knight, and I know so many of you guys do, you run Electro Giant and then you don't complain. Because every time that you run E-Giant, the Mega Knight doesn't kill it. The Mega Knight takes forever to finish that thing off. And if they don't have a building like most people don't, 
you're able to go in for mirrored up Electro Giants and get profuse value. So yes, this guy is able to go in for an Inferno Dragon. Yes, the Inferno Dragon counters this Electro Giant, but we're still getting reflection damage. We're still getting value. And I'm able to finish off here Inferno Dragon now with my second coming of the E-Giant. Oh my goodness. I love the fact that it's resetting it right now so I don't even have to go for a bat. And he's going for Ram Rider to slow down the E-Giant, but I don't think that's possible. I don't I don't think you can do that. I'm going to go and Tornado the, the Electro Wizard in so it's going to die. And then the mini pack is going to lock onto your tower because you have no way of distracting it. There's no amount of Elixir that you can drop to stop the mini pack and level 16 Electro Giant. There's nothing that Mega Knight can do in this situation. This is a Mega Knight player that did not have Mega Knight bait, by the way. 99% of the time, they're going to have like Dark Goblin or Skeleton Army or maybe like a Goblin Gang sometimes. This guy had Electro Wizard and Ram Rider to slow me down and stun me, and he still wasn't able to stop it. That's why this deck is really tough to deal with, and Clash Royale really dropped the ball, totally failing the nerf. I'm going to go in for another Electro Giant, and you guys are going to watch him bridge ban Mega Knights into E-Giants, and we just drop E-Giant on defense, and all of his stuff gets cleaned up. If you Electro Wizard and... You do, we're going to kill it with a mini P.E.K.K.A. If you go for Ram Rider on the other side, I mirror up my mini P.E.K.K.A. and you can't break through. There's nothing you can do besides Rage and Fireball and just leave the game. Oh look, he's going to go for a Ram Rider and it's going to get fully countered by a mini P.E.K.K.A. for no damage. See, there's literally nothing he can do. Incredibly easy victory. The E in E Giant stands for easy. All right, let's keep cruising. We're playing against someone with no clan. So hopefully we can make an imprint in his mind and make him want to join our clan because obviously you want to be a part of the Electro Giant army. If I E-Giant at the start, it's just a stupid decision. You want to get to your Elixir Collector, get Elixir Advantage, then go for E-Giants when you figure out what your opponent's deck is. I can split bats, but a lot of people are running the Mirror Mother Wish deck with Rail Hogs and Giant Skeleton. I just had so many bad experiences giving my opponent five free piggies. So I think our best bet is just to cycle mini pack on the back and see what he responds with. If he doesn't respond with anything and he tries to tornado or drop something on the other side, what I do is I go in for an electric giant in front of it. Like if he goes skeleton dragons in the other side or a baby dragon the other side, we can expect him to try to tornado the mini pack of the king tower. So I just wouldn't mess around with that. Ooh, spicy, spicy. So yeah, the e-giant kills that, but it's not worth letting the e-giant kill it. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are those? I'm actually extremely interested by his deck. Freeze Harry Potter and the tendency of dropping them on offense together. That is not going to work out for him in the long run, but I'm excited to figure out what he's going to do. If he's got Rocket with Freeze, I just want to go Elixir Collector here because I think the E-Giant is going to put in a lot of work. I don't want to overcommit with flimsy one Elixir cost cards that aren't going to do enough damage to the Valkyrie. So it's better for me to not support the push, take my Elixir Advantage, and feel really good about myself. You guys should do the same. Like when you're ahead, get further and further ahead instead of throwing your lead for no reason whatsoever. Okay, this guy might go in for a balloon or something. I'm going to gear up for an Electro Giant. Yeah, I kind of expected that to happen. I can pull that directly to the Elixir Collector and maybe not even take a hit. I think if we pull that directly to the Elixir Collector, it activates King Tower without any damage because Elixir Collector is a building and allows me to do that. Usually that doesn't work, but today it's different. I'm going to Tornado it last second to the middle. And with the King Tower activated, I don't think I take anything. Oh, he had freeze. He had the moves. My man had the moves. He had the waves for days. Please, bats, finish it. Okay, that was really bad. I shouldn't have sacrificed the bats there because now I don't know if the E-Giant's going to be able to three crown him. I got to kill the wizard. I need to kill Harry Potter, please. <laughs> Let's go. We bopped Harry Potter, but the E-Giant isn't able to three crown. What a weird game we have on our hands right now. I can't defend his balloon, and he also can't defend my stuff. All right, I think I'm just going to double E-Giant. There's no way, right? Like, we're going to let the skeleton barrel and the balloon do their stuff. I'm going to bats afterward. I can E-Giant here. And then I can go bats. And with the King Tower and bats, I think we're able to clap the balloon for a, before it takes my tower. He's not going to freeze that. Okay. We're set up for success. We're going to three crown one way or another. <laughs> Please let it work. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I don't know if that's a good decision. Just spamming stuff into him. He's going to freeze this 100%. 1 million percent. 1 bajillion percent. He's going to freeze it. Okay. I can go for another E-Giant here. The E-Giant didn't kill the wizard, which was really unfortunate for me. But I don't think he has any way of stopping that besides going for a skeleton army. And then we can go for another Electro Giant. The level 16 one is going to break down his door. There's no way. <laughs> Wait, he knew I was going to do that. So he's going to freeze. I think he's going to freeze that when I tornado his wizard in. Or he's going to freeze it last second. So it's better for me to wait. He definitely has to freeze that. Yeah, so I, I was just not going to mess around. If I knew what he was going to do reliably, why would I waste Elixir? Okay, so we can Electro Giant again. Skeleton Barrel dies. He doesn't have freeze and cycle, remember? So there's no way for him to do anything here. Like, that's just a bad decision. You don't have freeze. So I know that the E-Giant's going to take your tower, and you have to defend that. You have to drop all of your elixir. Look at the E-Giant putting in the work. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> Wait, is the mini pack going to give us one more? If the mini pack does that, I three crown. Did I not say I was going to three crown one way or another? We're set up for success. We're going to three crown one way or another. The prophecy rung true, and this guy got blown down by the tornado. Games like that are incredibly fulfilling because you never know what's going to happen. And even though I've played Clash Royale for five or six years now, I'm still surprised by that game. When you run different decks every day, no game ever feels the same. Let's see if we can keep up the streak. You guys already know this deck has been so dominant today. And I think that we're going to be able to find a way for positive elixir traits every single time. So I want to go for skeletons in the back, and we're just going to see what this guy wants to do. If he's not going to cycle anything, I guess I can go in for like a mini pack in the back. And if he does decide to go for units on the opposite side, as I said before, we go for an electric giant at the river and support our mini pekka so then he can't get a king tower activation. Ooh. With goblin cage out of cycle and you not having a building, how are you going to build a defense against double electric giants? You thought this was out of the meta. But you're out of your mind if you think that's the right play. Okay, so he's going to Baby Dragon, Barbaril. I think this is either a Graveyard deck or a Royal Giant. In either situation, I just want to go in for an Electro Giant here and kill the Baby Dragon and pop off with extreme value. Oh, those are E-Barbs. That's, that's not a card I thought you would have. The E-Barb's going to die, though. If he loses the Baby Dragon to the Bats and then the E-Barb's die to the Bats and then also the Bomber, let's go! He's poisoning! He has nothing at all for the Elixir Collector. If I Elixir Collector right now at 6 Elixir, he's not going to be able to do anything besides Graveyard me. And then if you Graveyard and I get Bats down, you're going to have to go in for Poison or Tornado. And then I'm just going to get a positive Elixir trade again. So, wait, what is this? That wasn't what I thought. This is Minor Control Poison instead of running Graveyard. I am... I'm baffled by this right now. I've never seen a deck like this before in my life. Is this Balloon with Poison? Or is this just like standard Minor Cycle with no Inferno Tower, but a Goblin Cage instead? You know what? We're up a lot of Elixir, so I feel like I can justifiably go and cycle that. Oh, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> I thought Lava Hound wasn't a possibility with this. I always see it with Tombstone instead. But I guess this will create more problems for us, because if I go in for an Electro Giant right now into Elite Barbarians and Goblin Cage... I don't know if I can break through. I'm going to try my hardest and we'll see what happens. I need to get Mini Packet down as well. And I need Bomber as well. As long as he doesn't have arrows in the deck, we're chilling. Because he's able to hit the bats. And he's also end up able to hit the Bomber as well. If he wants to be able to get absurd splash damage there. Ooh. How is the E-Giant fighting its way through a Goblin Cage? How is it still alive? How did that take tower right now? I'm asking for a friend. I'm going to call this guy my comrade, my brother in arms, because I'm feeling pain for him. I've never physically felt like, you know, this is just genuinely unfair and Clash Royale messed up, but they really did. How did they not nerf Mirror? How did they let that exist? It shouldn't have been nerfed. The Electro Giant was fine as is, but, you know, it, the Mirror, it's breaking down the game with level 16 cards that you can't counter. So it looks like the guy actually left the game too, and I don't blame him. Double tap, swipe up, and move on to the next one to reset the mental. He had Elite Barbarians and Goblin Cage, and he still wasn't able to stop Mirrored Up Electro Giant. Those are two of the best answers in the entire game. This just doesn't feel fair. After that win, we're 6,800 in the world. All right, let's go. Illuminati 4.0 from our opponent. Well, that's interesting. How many evolutions have you had, man? In Pokemon, you only end up having like three or so. This guy has uh, evolved to a different degree. Maybe we can go and protect our Elixir Collector if he goes in for a Miner, but he's going to have Skeleton King, and it's looking like a Graveyard deck. Every time we play against Graveyard, we know that there's a chance he's going to end up having Ice Wizard, Tornado, and Tombstone, and a profuse amount of answers to our Bridge Spam. So it's going to be difficult for me to find a great opportunity to go in, but I'm still going to Electro Giant because I want to be able to win the Bridge Battle if possible. So I could have Tornadoed on that. I, I, I wonder if that was worth it. Probably, right? But then it would have broken down my card cycle, so then I couldn't have went in for a Mirrored Up Electro Giant. And I always want to go in for Mirrored Up Electro Giant. That's how I play Clash Royale, guys. I know, I feel like a sadistic sir, but this is the way that it works. If you don't Mirror Up your Electro Giant, you're just not getting your full strength. Wait, can I do this and bats and then just try to defend with the Mini Pekka and a Tornado here? The Tornado to kill the bats after we finish off the Night Witch. That's my game plan. I, I think this will work out really, really well. So we'll see. A tornado here. We're going to be able to kill the Night Witch. And it didn't work out as well as we wanted. I think I need to go in for an Electro Giant on defense so then we don't get 3 crowned by all the skeletons. It's fine. It's all completely calculated, guys. It might look completely and utterly like chaos, but I've got it under wraps. I'm going to go for a Bomber here. It looks like the Skeleton King is going to die. If he decides to go for a Tornado, that's not going to be enough to be able to kill the Electro Giant. So I don't know really why he did that. 
He should lose the Skeleton King, and then the Golem's gonna die to both of our towers finishing everything off, and then I can go for Elixir Collector. Hmm. He's clicking a second Skeleton King ability. Isn't that weird that sometimes abilities are able to get dropped twice in a game? I feel like Clash Royale should only have one ability per champion per lifetime. Let me know if that's a change that you guys would implement in the game, or if you guys think I'm crazy for doing that. 60 seconds remaining with double elixir. I think I go for another elixir collector because if he goes golem, I go same side with my E giant and then I mini pack on top of the rest of his stuff. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> There's no way that that works, right? There's literally no universe because we're able to kill the night witch with our bats. And even if you tornado with them, we're fine because I can tornado afterwards and finish off the golem and finish off all of your bats. So you dropped a huge elixir trade there, bro. And now we've got Murin cycle with double E giant. Oh my gosh, so this guy's gonna have like a great defensive sequence, right? He's gonna end up having like Tornado, he's gonna end up having a Tombstone, but is it gonna be enough? The Tombstone doesn't even shoot my E-Giant, so there's no source of me getting Reflection damage, which is something that E-Giant typically needs. But do we need it now? I don't think we do. I think I just keep spamming E-Giants too. Like, there's a chance that you could go in for a Mini Pekka here, but why would I do that when I can spam the Electro Giant Brothers one after another? Oh my gosh, he lost the Skeleton King too. My goodness. I'm just going to keep spamming E-Giants. And when you get this card cycle, you cycle your E-Giant, you cycle the second mirrored up one, and then you cycle cheap one elixir and two elixir cross cards with Tornado. And then you're already back to another one. Like I drop Bats, Bomber, and sometimes Tornado, and then I can just get to another E-Giant because I mirrored one. So then the next one is only three cards away. So I can drop like one elixir, two elixir, and then get back to it. It's really, really dumb. So that's what we're going to continue to do. I'm only dropping a solid, like, 5 Elixir to get back to E-Giant, which makes this card cycle incredibly broken, if you think about it. So he's going to go in for another Tombstone. It doesn't matter. I go for Skeletons. I should be able to kill the Tombstone. And he's in a bad cycle that he can't break out of. He's, like, locked in jail, where he is only having a permanent view of Electro Giant everywhere. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. I'm only cycling 5 Elixir and I'm getting back to another Electro Giant. And it just feels like he can't go on offense because he is always having to defend this. I can go in for Bats, Skeletons, Bomber, and then I'm back to E-Giant again. And that's just what we've been doing for the past couple minutes. <laughs> and it's way too fun. He's never breaking out. He's just going to be breaking his phone because he's getting bad Elixir trades for days. Oh, wait, he's going to try to do it. He's trying to break out of jail. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, here's the thing. If you try to Tombstone and you're dropping it there to distract my Mini P.E.K.K.A., you kind of need it on defense. I'm not going to lie. You're a psychopath for trying that. So we've won this one. Just 30 seconds remaining of him trying his hardest and failing. He actually tried to Lightning Cycle me a couple times at the end. He almost got more damage than I was expecting, but I had Mirror Tornado in the back. So even if he tornadoed my tower, we were fine at the end. The Lightning did a lot of damage with Golem Death Damage. He just never had the opportunity to drop too many Golems on me. Only spending 5 Elixir to get back to Mirrored Up Electro Giant needs a massive nerf. Even if the players are good with Tornado and Tombstone and multiple defenses, they still can't stop it. Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an awesome rest of your day.